Hi, I'm James Lichens, Associate Director of Emerging Technologies for Arc Group. Digital twins are a technology we've been looking more closely into this year. And courtesy of COVID and the Melbourne lockdowns, it's been very hard to actually get out there and run proof of concepts and, and get further in our understanding. So as part of round one lockdown in Melbourne, I made a digital twin of my house. So this is uh, the apartment, the one bedroom apartment that my wife and I live in in Victoria, sitting here right now. The digital twin, the whole idea is that it helps you visualize and then interact with the physical environment. Uh, but more importantly, as it gets advanced, it can start to forecast and predict and then do interact with the environment on your behalf. So this digital twin took about six weeks to make. Uh, it's combining a whole lot of different sensors in, in the house, including motion sensors, temperature, smart plugs, smart lights, and external data feeds like coming from uh, Bureau of Meteorology for weather and United Energy for our, data, for our electricity usage. Um, and then that allows us to bring it all together in this open source platform called Home Assistant. And then it gets represented in this 3D view. There's a few cool things that it does, including preventing my wife and I interrupting each other when we're on video conferences, which I'll get to in a minute. But there's even the basics of just being able to see and interact with the environment. So for example, in this room, it's a bit light at the moment outside, but you might be able to see on the back wall the light turning on and off in this room that I can do from here. Uh, and then also there's all the other rooms in the house as well can be controlled. Firstly, by clicking on this, and then also we've got a mobile app for it, which my wife and I have, and this is the view of it over here. Uh, you can control the other rooms as well. So for example, turn the kitchen on, I could turn the bathroom. Digital Twin's been really handy from the point of view of our energy usage in the house and, and making the experience not only cheaper, but nice, more pleasant. So there's a bunch of motion sensors in the room. If I move around, you should see this little dude light up in a second. So if I wave my arms around, it should go yellow, which is good. It still works. Um, that's really handy because now that the digital twin knows where we are and when we're moving around the house at night time, it can turn the lights on and off automatically. We don't turn a single light switch on in the, in the house. And not only that, in the early evening, it can be quite bright light, but as it gets later and it's getting closer to bedtime, it's more relaxed and lighting to suit the mood. And also overnight, <clears throat> the number of times I've stubbed my toe or tripped on something, that's now solved because the digital twin detects when I'm moving around the house at night, overnight, and turns some of the lights on in the rooms just really, really dim, especially in like the little kickboard level at the bottom of the, the cupboards just to light up the floor enough to make sure I don't stub my toe. So having a feed of our energy costs has helped us manage our running costs while uh, we've been in lockdown and also especially during winter when it's a lot more expensive to heat and run a house. Our heater is one of those portable oil electric heaters. So they're quite expensive to run, but the digital twin can help us do that. Only if we got a view of how much power it uses, as it heats up and turns off and the thermostat and everything. You can also control it, like you can see here. This is that ability to control it, the, the house can now start to be a bit more smart about it and control it for us. So the house can understand when um, someone's cooking, uh, it's just gone lunchtime, uh, or when someone's been having, a, has had a shower and then help to manage the, the heat in the house because of that. The other bit where it's been really powerful is safety. So that oil heater, there's been a few times we've forgotten to turn it off, especially at night. And now the digital twin can detect that and turn it off automatically for us and give us a, a notification on our, both my wife and I's phone to give us a slap on the wrist to say, be a bit safer. One of the other cool things that the digital twin's been able to do is help save this plant. In our front courtyard, we have uh, some bamboo that it's been great, uh, except it's, it went very yellow because we'd always forget to water it. Uh, so what we were able to do is with the digital twin was put in a, a watering system, but also not just to be able to automatically turn the watering on and off, but to monitor the, the how damp the soil is to know that when it's dry, it actually needs to be watered. And then when it does detect that it's dry, it'll turn on 
the watering system uh, and then obviously keep the leaves all lush. But then there's the other end of that is that it can be overwatered, especially when it comes to rain. And with Melbourne, rain's so frequent and all over the shop. So this can actually tap into the weather feed. And if it's going to rain, it can delay watering it until it's going to need it. So this area for me was around, around washing. I'm hopeless at remembering to take out the washing and the washing machine finishes to the point where I'll remember a day or two later and by the time I open that washing machine, the clothes smell worse than they did before they went in. So that's solved now. The digital twin can detect when the washing machine in our bathroom is running. And then when it's finished, it'll send a notification to myself and my wife to rem remind us that we need to take out the clothes. So the biggest thing the home automation has done for my wife and I during lockdown is to finally solve the problem of us interrupting each other when we're having video conferences. So that this, the digital twin can tell when we join a video conference. Uh, let's do that right now. We'll try it out just here. And when we have joined a conference, it will automatically turn on a number of lights around the house to indicate to each other that we're in a conference. So there's the cactus in the background here, but that's more for entertainment for everyone else who's on the video conferences with me throughout the day. But in some of the other rooms, like the kitchen, the light goes on just a really pale, dim red colour to indicate to one another. And now that's all but stopped uh, us interrupting each other on video conferences.